Oh, hey. You can fight them. This is great. You can fight you can fight her. Now then, you're walking down the street on your way somewhere and a handsome vo you've never met approaches. Oh, I would wave casually to him, but also keep myself prepared in case he's a distraction for a bandit ambush. <laughs> Excellent thinking, Pasha. That's a prudent approach to a new situation. Remember that sometimes Vo may look suspicious, but you are just being wary due to the sight of a daunting or but are just being wary due to the sight of a daunting Gerudo. Oh, I would enthusiastically greet him, approaching with a smile and with my hands clearly empty. Wow, Dina, that's a very optimistic approach to take. Ah. Being overtly friendly is an excellent way to put the stranger's mind at ease. Oh, I would walk casually toward him and then strike a fierce blow when he least expects it. Mm. Risa, that would be a crime. <laughs> uh, Risa, what do you have to say? Savak! <laughs> To be perfectly honest, I'm only taking Miss Ashai's class as a kind of refresher course, but still, I have to—I still have to study. Hey, guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Last time, we took on the blight of Divine Beast Va Meadow once more. Wind blight, wind blight, Ganon, and Rivali unlocked a a better version of his Gale for us. This one has a one third cooldown. It's not even half. It's one third of the cooldown it was before. And as you can see, I've been putting that to great use collecting Korok seeds. And I'm happy to announce that Tabantha is done. Hebra is done. Gerudo is done. And the Great Plateau is also complete. Which means that I just need to clear out the uh, the highlands, or the actual Grudo region, the snowy region, and then the Ridgeland Tower, and then half of the map, or I guess it would be a third, a third of the map is cleared out of Korok Seeds. I have 280 remaining. Yes, that means that I now have 620 Korok Seeds in my inventory. This time, we are in Gerudo, because we're going in... We're going in reverse order from how we cleared the Divine Beasts at first. So we started with uh, with Lanayru, we went to Elden, then Gerudo, then uh, to Bantha, and now we're going to Gerudo again. Going to talk to Cass. I applaud your courage in coming here. The locations that will be revealed to you are of trials that will enhance the power sleeping within. Do not let your guard down. I recognize that. Oh, that's that's turned, isn't it? Yeah, that's turned a little bit. So these ones aren't affixed to north, it seems. Oh. Did that, uh, sorry, <clears throat> did that stone monument just start glowing? I suppose that proves I didn't imagine it the first time. Hmm? Hmm? How strange to see someone else at this ample an altitude. I wonder what brought him here. Oh, how embarrassing. I am afraid traveling on my own encourages me to talk to myself on occasion. Oh. Look at that! There's one here too! One of the monuments mentioned in my teacher's unfinished song. Ah, such a rush of happiness I feel at being able to sing while the divine beast watches over us. This is a song my teacher left behind. There is a verse about the trials that Champion Obrosa overcame. Allow me to sing it. Lightning King of the Desert. Nebursa's champion, the stalwart. The hero's power shall grow. See trials, monuments show. One, fight the brute of the sand. Two, chase rings upon the land. 
Sui, throw the orb underground. Champion, trials abound. So, did it move you? By asking around about the champions of each region, I'm starting to piece together the key verses oh. of the song. Hmm, it's as if the champions are speaking to me through the song. I hear their silent plea for its completion. That's why I must learn more about the champions of Hyrule's past. Luckily, the Gerudo chief, Riju, and her guard, Buliara, shared some precious tales of their champion with me. I'm grateful I was able to visit Gerudo Town, even though I had to, well, leave my comfort zone a bit. <laughs> I was going to ask how he got there, but na now we know. Three pictures once again. I believe my... Yeah, my album's full, so let me, let me fix that. I have so many good pictures. Hopefully, I was able to include this, because I found another T-posing uh, Lizalfos. Let's delete, uh, that's a fond memory, that's a good view. Picture number one, it's very clear where this one is. It's right next to the maze, save. In fact, that one's right next to us right now, so we'll probably go there first. Then this one is next to the, I think it's next to the, actually no, I, I can see where it is. In the far left side of the photo, there is the pit where we fight Master Koga. I know exactly where that is. And then... This one... That's the... That's the ice... The ice place. The ice, uh... Pit. So... We, we know where all these are. Good. Now, let's mark them on our map. First one is... This is one. Oh, it's in the pit. <gasps> oh, is it the... It's at the bottom of the pit! Oh, I'm excited for that one. And below the South Lome Labyrinth. Hmm, I... You know what? We're only going to be doing one of the the uh, trials this episode because of time constraints, thanks to the Korok Seeds and something else I would like to comp accomplish. Uh, let's... Let's go to this one, because surprisingly, it is right next to where I want to go after I, I get the one shrine of the episode. So, let's warp to Dako Chise Shrine and head west. Dako Chise Shrine. All we need to do is turn west and make sure my gear is, is good here, because I'd rather have the, sh sn the uh, sand boots and... Yeah, it doesn't really matter what I have, but it's about to turn night, so I can put this on. Yeah. And let's head this way. Man. So much has happened recently with uh with E3 that it's it's kinda I'm kind of hard pressed not to mention how hype I how hyped I am for it in this episode. Oh. I see. Okay, we need to we need a sand seal, so let's use Revali's Gale. Get up here. And, and snag us a sand seal. But with E3 happening, I'm hard-pressed not to express my hype. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, I didn't know you were selling sand seals. Yes. Uh, they're all trained by Frelly. Uh, I forget that my accent for them. They're faster, and they'll wait for you to, uh, to return to them. By comparison, the ones outside who haven't been trained will just run off the moment you dismount. It's definitely t worth renting a trained one. I uh, buy Wait, what did she just say? Oh. Buy. Okay. Is this is a bit off topic, but it seems Frelly has been talking a, a little strangely lately. I wonder what's gotten into her. That's odd. We might have to check that one out. Are you friendly? Oh, you're just a friendly. Oh. That's my sand seal, so you'd better stay back. I won't be held responsible if Frelly gets upset. Uh, fine. I'll find my own. But yeah, one of the one of the E3 announcements that I'm surprisingly the most excited for was the new GameCube controllers they they gave. Uh, I invested in some in two white brand new uh, Japanese exclusive GameCube controllers a while back, and 
I was looking at prices. Okay, yeah, this is pretty easy. I was looking at prices, and they've jumped to about 120, 150 each, and I have two of them, and I spent $30. Wait, are you Mulduga? No, okay. Get through. And I'm really pleased with that because my investments have been pretty sound lately. Like, my, I've been, I've... I haven't really meant to be the investing type, but I, I have been doing some investing, and it it's great to see that um, like my speculations have uh, turned out to be correct. Like I've uh, yeah through there, I have purchased the two ga white GameCube controllers, which are worth 150 each. So that's um, what is that? That's five times my value, or I guess 120 minimum, which would be four times. But I'm four to five times my investment. Um, a while back, I bought Dokapon Kingdom at a GameStop. I managed to track it down and find it um, in their used game section, and it was 20 bucks. I was like, I'll pick it up. It's it's gonna it's worth more than that right now. It was 40 at the time. Now it's like 200 or 160. It's crazy how much that thing is worth. Um, I bought Xenoblade for like 60, and now it's a little bit less than that because of the re-release. But Man, my investments have been so good, except for Xenoblade. But Xenoblade is just a game I wanted to play, so it's less of an investment and more of, I love this game, I bought it when it was rare. Okay. Uh, Takama Shiri Shrine. Dual purpose. Huh. So yeah, price speculation is actually pretty fun and fairly easy. Like, if you have a good sense for the rarity of something and you can pay attention to when you see it, like, just garage sale shopping is is really, really enjoyable. Uh, I'm gonna get shocked if I touch that, aren't I? Right? Let's, let's test this. I'm gonna unequip my stuff so I don't have to worry about dropping it. Oh yeah, okay. So let's, Thunder Helmet? Thunder Helm. It's great. Uh, actually, we don't get to give the, the rubber tights that much, that much, uh, we don't get to show them off that often, so I'm gonna equip those because those are. I mean, they don't look that great, but they're you don't you never wear them. There's no reason really to wear them. Okay, so this is called this is shrine is called dual purpose. I assume because we're supposed to be making a pathway and also progressing, uh, making a pathway and also connecting these circuits. Uh, this one needs to go over there because. It, it has a purpose of serving as a platform. Uh, actually, if we do this, and then we move this one over there, and this one over here, that opens it up, but we're now unable to get over there. So what I need to do is move this one, now that we've used it to cross that, move that one, Oh, we don't have a circuit. There. Good. And... Good. I'm gonna move this one over just so it looks a little bit better. And then we'll walk over. Alright, still not sure where the chest is here. I'm a bit worried about that. But we'll, we'll see. Also, I have a theory to test, just real quick. If I move this out... Wait, are you guys touching? There. And if I shoot this with a shock arrow, is it enough? No. If I keep shooting it? Nope. Okay. Just want to make sure that this isn't, it isn't like the current solution and that you can just kind of cheese your way through it. It requires a constant current to work. Okay. Where are we going here? This one is more vertically inclined. We can climb- oh, I see. It's it's kind of a jigsaw puzzle. We need to both align ourselves so we can climb it. And also align it so we can get this circuit going. Okay, well, I'm going to get up a little bit just so I can see a little bit better. Climb up. Move this one. Let's move this one here. Actually, that's not needed, is it? Uh, let's move this 
there, because we still need to be able to get up. And then we'll move this one over. Not sure if we're supposed to be able to do it like that, but I am doing it like that. Actually, no, we don't even need that. Move this one over completely. Move that one. Oh, wait. Why did I think that would work? We don't need this thing back here. Oh, it's a two it's a tour. Okay. Push. Connect this. Hmm. Wait a minute. Oh! Oh! Well here's our chest. We just need to move this one over a tiny bit. And it opens this little this little uh pantry. Do we get food in the pantry? Or do we just get weapon? We just get weapon. And not a great weapon at that. A royal bow with quick shot isn't the worst thing in the world, but I'd rather take a falcon bow. I'd take a falcon bow any day. Okay, so this one is a this one's a bit more difficult than I gave it credit for. one over. That works. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's how we we're supposed to do it. But Oh, there that's a problem though. Here, if I move this over, I should be able to climb on it and then push it back. I don't think that's a big problem here. Yeah, just push it back. And we're th through and we're done. And they gave us a little bit of a walkway just to kind of take a step back and look at the big picture. I think that's how they wanted us to solve it. Maybe. I'm not actually sure. It looks a little bit... I'm not sure if we were supposed to connect it diagonally like we did. But it worked, so I, I suppose I shouldn't complain. Also, do I... Uh, I have to get back up, don't I? Back through. And that should be it. Let's check behind as we always do. I've been rewarded with it once, so shut up. It it worked once. And that's it. Well, not entirely it. We still have one more thing to do this episode. I'm cutting the progress a little bit short because, if you'll remember, we spoke to um, Kilton a few episodes back, and he said that if we managed to defeat Every single boss of a certain kind, we would get a reward. Now, I found the other Mulduga. It was here. And I killed it. So, if we go to Kilton, who should be right there when I warp, let, we can see what reward we get. So let's go to the whole picture and run back to Kilton. There he is. Good old Kilton in his place. I wonder if we're if we, he gets any other customers besides us. Because I'm not sure what his market would be. I mean, I get that. I get that. I mean, maybe some of his stuff would have you. I, well, no, it wouldn't even have use. It only really appeals to adventurers like me. So I don't know. I don't know if he gets any other business or if he's just creepy and... He says he's a business to us, but he he's not actually. Hey! This smell. Is it a Mulduga? Or perhaps... Ah! Oh, it's just you. Good evening. How may I help you? Monsters. Oh, yeah. Which monsters do you want to talk about? The giant sand beast. Sniff, sniff this scent. This, this is... You've done it. You've defeated all of the Muldugas. Oh, this scent. It's as if a Mulduga was standing right in front of me. Oh, th th thank you so much. Oh, yes. Let me give you this. Medal of Honor, Mulduga. A medal presented by Kilton in somber honor of having defeated every Mulduga. Slaying a monster is a very he heavy burden to bear. You must steal yourself to carry this weight. This is proof that you've defeated every last Mulduga in Hyrule. As long as you have this, I'll always be with you. You don't have to suffer in silence anymore. I know just how much it hurts you every time you kill a monster. Destroying monsters for their materials is soul-crushing work, but it must be done. 
Uh ha 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 ha. What does this do? Uh, you know, I'm actually gonna look this one up because in the in the comments, a lot of you were surprised. You didn't know that this existed. So I don't know who it was that originally commented, but I'm not gonna ask uh, this. So I'm I'm going to look this up. The Medal of Honor serves no purpose other than a re an award recognizing Link's accomplishment of finding and defeating its respective boss. All right, so technically that means we can get a second pay. Well, no, because we there are two more. But this is the completion for the the key items page, I believe, because there's nothing else that we can get, and so these empty slots in every category, I believe. Except this one. This one... Actually, no, this one as well. In every single category, they fill out the pages. They were very smart with that. Except armor, I guess. That's kind of weird. But maybe... Actually, no. With with amiibo armor, that should probably fill it out. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. With amiibo armor, this would also be filled out. Which means maybe I should get to this at some point. And with this, uh, the end of game light arrow fills out the last slot. So every single page has to be filled for 100%, or at least for my definition, 100%. So now you guys know, and now I know what goes in those spots. That is going to be it for this episode. Next time in Pal Plays Breath of the Wild, we are going to be uh, going to the two remaining shrines, saving the pit, the best for last. And then... We can face the trial of uh, Niburus. Thank you guys so much for watching. I release new episodes of Breath of the Wild every Monday and Wednesday. If you enjoyed this episode in any capacity and want to see my channel grow just a little bit bigger, go ahead and share your favorite video of mine with any one of your friends. Even if it just gives results in a view, it's still spreading my channel by word of mouth, which is one of the strongest ways that a channel can grow. All right. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Duga. Now, is this one special? Uh, let's look at our adventure log. This one is... Fight the Brute of the Sand. So, it doesn't say whether or not... Oh, Moldu... Moldu King? <laughs> is this Mewtwo King's brother? His younger bro brother slash cousin? No one really knows. He doesn't rock forward and backward in his chair. He rocks from side to side. <laughs> and he plays Roy. Rivali's Gale is now ready. <laughs> 